Now for my mermaid. You can see clearly here, again this is 28 count Lugama. These are the normal stitches, which are stitched two, two over two. So two threads of cotton over two fabric threads. And I have stitched her skin one over one. Now this is done to give the skin a more delicate appearance. Um, it looks a lot softer, it looks a lot more natural. Um, it is very time consuming and it is not for everybody. Um, not everyone will enjoy this. It, it is quite challenging, so I put the warning out there right now. Um, but if you can stick at it, I think it is very worthwhile. I, am, I was asked if I recharted the chart to do the one over one, and I didn't. I just figured it out. Um, if on the chart it actually showed 10 stitches across, then I knew I had to go 20 stitches across because I was doing um, double the amount of stitches lengthways. When it came to her face, it got a little bit trickier. As you can see, there is a defined outline to her face. It wasn't as simple as going to the edge of a line and stopping. And I did find it quite tricky without having recharted the design. So I came up with the idea of just stitching along the outline of her face as it showed on the chart. And then I, I did it quite loosely. And then I filled in the stitches to where the line was. And then I unpicked the line afterwards. So to give you an example of how that worked, if this was the chart here, and this is how the chart would show, and this is the outline, so I went in and I filled in the outline exactly as it said. And when you're stitching this over one, you need to remember that each one of these crosses will become four crosses. Because you're doing it over one. Because you have two vertical and two horizontal in each of those crosses. So therefore, you will have four little miniature crosses in there. So as I said, if it, if it was just doing a straight line, it was quite easy to figure that out. It'd be three, four, five, six across. So therefore, I would have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve across by two high. Or you could say six times four, four in each square, 24. So instead of six stitches there, there was 24 stitches. So you can imagine it did take me four times as long to do. I'll get, show you an example of how I stitched it. Now here is my fabric and I have stitched the outline. And I have stitched the outline for the face exactly as it has been shown on the chart. I haven't altered it at all. I have stitched it as though it was done over two strands. So I'll begin my stitch. And when I stitch, I like to work my way across and then work back whenever possible. So I do half stitches, otherwise known otherwise known as tent stitch. all the way across until I reach the outline. And then I can judge whether I need to fill in the square at the end with a full cross or just a half stitch because of the angle of the outline. And 
when you start doing this, the stitches will not look even and they will look quite messy. But in the end, it comes together quite well. I recommend using a magnifying glass for this process. It makes it much easier to see not only the holes, but the stitches. Skin colours are very light and more difficult to see when stitching over one. So I'm just going to continue to show you what would represent one row of stitching on the chart. But for me, it will be two rows of miniature stitching. And this type of stitching is called petite point. Stitching one over one. And as I said, this is very time consuming. It will take you four times as long because you're doing four, stitch, four stitches to every one. And with my mermaid, it was made even more difficult by the fact that she had blended stitches and what that means is one strand of one colour and one strand of another colour and they're used together to create a blended colour effect So how do you do that when you're only stitching with one strand? How do you do two strands of colour? So the answer is you need to stitch half of your stitches with one colour. So the bottom leg of the stitch. And then you finish the top leg with the other colour. So I chose to pick the darker of the two colours as the bottom leg and then I finished the top leg in the lighter colour and it still gave the blended look so I was very happy with that and while you're doing this too um, it's important not to pierce the outline with your stitches this outline here because otherwise it will be difficult to remove out afterwards. So you can see how long this has taken me, plus a little bit longer because I'm doing it through a camera. Now I'm going to stitch the row above as normal, how the chart would have shown it, and then you can compare the two. And because I only have one strand on my needle, I'm going to stitch these stitches twice because the chart calls for two threads. And just excuse me piercing the outline there, but this is just a demonstration and it's through a camera, so it's not the best situation. I wasn't sure if I liked this stitching one over one for the skin when I first started it. I thought the stitches looked really messy, but I'm really happy with it now that it's finished. Okay, just finish these off. My apologies if this makes you a little sick. It's not easy getting the right camera angle 
and holding the fabric in hand while I'm doing this. Very much out of my comfort zone. Doing these tutorials is, is new to me. But you all seem to be enjoying them, so I'll keep doing them while you keep asking. Okay, so this is the first row on the chart of two and a quarter stitches. So we have one, two, and a little quarter stitch. And then I've done the top row exactly how it's been charted. So you can see the difference in the size of the stitches. So if you have any questions regarding this, please feel free to comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. I usually answer my messages in the morning before I head off to work because the afternoons are quite hectic. And um, again, I'll show you the mermaid piece. You can clearly see the difference in the size there. Again, the little stitches aren't perfect in, in shape and size, but when the picture's framed and up on the wall, you just see this beautiful, delicate skin tone, and I think it will look lovely. I'm already happy with it now, so I hope that uh, has helped those of you that asked to see this technique, and uh, I hope you give it a go. Just remember it's not for everyone, not everyone will enjoy this. Um, as I said, it, again it's very, very time consuming and um, hard on the eyes and it will test your math skills. <laughs> but I totally recommend doing that outline to see exactly where your stitches need to go and then you can always unpick the outline later and do it when it's meant to be done. So thank you again for watching and hope you all have a great stitching day. Goodbye. Okay,